All right, well, good evening and thanks for your patience, like the rest of the folks up here. <clears throat> okay, first, uh, Mark Yellarducci, uh, Director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services uh, uh, for Governor Brown. Okay, so first of all, uh, thanks for your patience. And um, obviously, you know, I want to, you know, acknowledge the that the situation has been stressful, it's complex and, and rapidly changing, and so we are doing everything uh, we can in the effort to support uh, Butte County and the local authorities to be able to address um, all, mostly the displaced uh, folks that have been forced to evacuate as a result of the potential um, conditions in the emergency spillway. Um, the governor has been closely following all of this and has been in contact with the officials that are managing the incident throughout the weekend and uh, again um, has had conversations with us here tonight. Um, within the last hour, he has issued uh, an emergency proclamation uh, for the situation. The proclamation will give us uh, the ability to take all actions necessary to protect public health uh, and to help the local officials in their effort uh, in doing the same. We also activated the State Operations Center, which you see behind me this afternoon, when the Department of Water Resources realized the problem was developing at the auxiliary spillway. Uh, our 24-hour California Warning Center has also been sending notifications to counties downstream that could be affected by the, any potential rising water and or evacuations. Our law enforcement branch has also deployed uh, a number of mutual aid law enforcement assets to assist Butte County Sheriff and others uh, with the evacuations of um, individuals. And our fire and rescue uh, branch has deployed a number of swift water rescue teams from throughout uh, the Northern California area to assist with any evacuations that are necessary or um, uh, any high water uh, type of situations. Uh, we've been also working very closely with our partner agencies and state government, all state agencies that have a role have been activated and are here at the State Operations Center. Uh, this is a, a combined um, uh, effort in support of Butte County and, and surrounding counties. Um, and uh, the Red Cross has also been engaged to support uh, uh, with shelters and displaced residents. Uh, part of that has been um, uh, the folks you see behind me, I'm gonna let each one of them talk. California Highway Patrol has been very much engaged with uh, traffic management and support of local authority. Uh, the uh, California uh, Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, Cal Fire, have been very engaged uh, with their incident management teams, and the California National Guard uh, has been uh, engaged with deploying resources at the ready, uh, both air assets and ground forces as necessary to support the situation. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it quickly over to uh, each one of the um, uh, leads from the various agencies. First, I'm going to turn it over to Chief Kemp Hemlot. Uh, the director of uh, the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, CAL FIRE. Good evening. Um, as Director Geller uh mentioned, CAL FIRE uh, deployed an incident management team to work for, uh, directly with the Department of Water Resources um, as early as Thursday evening. We've had an incident management team uh, jointly co-located, engaged, and embedded with the water resources, engaging in all the operations, uh, working towards mitigating uh, the incident. Uh, in addition to that, they're not just working on uh, plans for the facility and the operations there, but they have been very actively engaged in contingency planning uh, well outside of and downstream uh, of the facility. And the evacuations and the process that occurred today was a direct result of the contingency planning, and they were prepared uh, to provide that notification to make those evacuations based on the planning and the efforts that had gone on. Again, this is something CAL FIRE is well practiced at with incident management teams, not only on wildland fires, but all hazard emergencies around the state. So in addition to the, the management team, CAL FIRE, as part of the mutual aid system, also has numerous fire engines, uh, hand crews, uh, and helicopters deployed and available uh, to respond should they be needed. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to uh, General Baldwin with the uh, National Guard. Thank you, uh, Chief Pimlot. California National Guard has all of our resources standing by and available for the call to assist civil authorities both in the impacted area in helping the displaced people as well as helping DWR focus on helping to shore up the, the spillway. We've uh, deployed aviation assets. We have military police that are going to be deploying to Yuba County 
We've also have uh, transportation, high water truck transportation available, and we're assisting with, prepared to assist with mass care and shelter of displaced people. Again, all of our resources are available. We have over 1,200 people on duty in Northern California that are ready to go at a moment's notice, and we can bring in additional resources as necessary. In addition, we've been in direct con uh, contact with uh, leadership at the United States Northern Command, so if we need additional resources from other military organizations throughout the nation, they'll be able to do deploy right away. Good evening. I'm Deputy Commissioner Warren Stanley from the California Highway Patrol. And as far as our deployment of personnel, we brought in an additional 100 personnel. We brought in 50 from what we call Northern Division, and they are assisting up in Orville. They're assisting patrolling the city of Orville, and they're also helping out the evacuation center. We brought in another uh, 50 personnel, 50 officers, from here in the Sacramento Valley, and they are assisting uh, with uh, patrolling in Yuba City, Marysville, Wheatland, Gridley, and Live Oak. Uh, they're also helping with evacuation, uh, general law enforcement type services, and any other services that may be needed. Additionally to the personnel, we brought in some other assets. We brought in uh, three helicopters that can assist with search and rescue, and also uh, two airplanes that can also assist with search and rescue, and also uh, uh, provide us information on traffic control with some of the cameras that they have. And uh, we'll be evaluating overnight, depending on what happens, uh, what our deployment will be for tomorrow morning. Okay, so you can see that uh, really the full uh, power of the state of California has been made available in support of um, uh, Butte County and the surrounding counties during this situation. Uh, again, the, the uh, Butte County Sheriff has, uh, and the local authorities have done uh, a, a great job in being able to, to um, uh, manage the situation. Uh, these are always complex uh, situations, and uh, uh, um, all the resources you see behind me have been made available as necessary. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. When was the last time that the National Guard was mobilized? I mean, we, actually, we actually mobilized the National Guard all the time for a, a lot of different reasons. Um, it's just the levels of deployment, you know, particularly during fire season, the National Guard is tremendously a, a major partner with CAL FIRE and OES in being able to provide aviation assets, uh, all ground firefighters, et cetera. Um, uh, we use them on a number of different kinds of occasions. So really, we, 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 we mobilize them pretty regularly. Yeah, so I would, I would just add that, you know, we do missions across the state on, almost on a daily basis. Um, the last large-scale mobilization, as Director Giladucci said, was for wildfires in the past wildfire season. We also mobilized uh, almost 2,000 people to support the Super Bowl. The last time, though, we did an alert for the entire California National Guard, as we did today, was uh, the 1992 riots. So we did, in fact, um, put out a notification not to report in, but to be ready to go if needed to all 23,000 soldiers and airmen that are part of the California National Guard. And, and so the type of duties we'll be doing again for this incident? So we, we, we have a broad range of capability that we make available. Um, we'll be sending eight helicopters to assist uh, with the uh, spillway reconstruction uh, activities uh, beginning tomorrow. Those aircraft will also be available for search and rescue if we have to move into that mode. We're sending military police to assist with law enforcement in securing evacuated areas. And we're also going to be sending uh, mass care and shelter units that can uh, shelter either responders or displaced people. We, uh, so the question had to do with uh, our time frames of, of starting to ratchet down after uh, uh, the next few, few hours or a few days. Really, that's going to be dependent upon uh, the needs of local government. Our role, our role in this particular case is in support of the local authorities and the evacuations that have, have taken place, uh, and also to support Department of Water Resources as they begin their process of, of doing whatever reconstruction or mitigation is necessary to make uh, the situation uh, safe and secure uh, so there's no longer a public safety threat. You have teams scattered all over the area right now. So what seems to be the biggest challenge for you? Uh, the question had to do with our teams that are scattered around the, the area and what are the challenges. Well, really, we, we've got a lot of resources that are staged and in place. I mean, the idea here 
was that like all of us, it sort of unfolded and you know, we wanted to make sure we had uh, all the resources in front of the evolving crisis so that we, we weren't late to being able to respond. Uh, right now, those resources um, are going to be um, supported logistically, kept at the ready. Uh, the biggest challenge is, is really making sure that we continue to stay out in front with situational awareness to make sure that we have the right resource at the right time uh, made available both to the county and to DWR. Um, I'm going to turn it over to the Department of Water Resources Rep, uh, Gary Bardini. Gary? Gary Bardini, uh, Department of Water Resources Deputy Director. Uh, when you come into an emergency event uh, like the one we just have here where essentially you have facilities that are compromised, it takes a bit of time to go through the assessment of it and bring them online. Uh, as we work through the issues, there are sometimes where there's uh, circumstances. So we're right now working through those. I, I don't have point where lights are off. Last question. We had some viewers who uh, sent in photos of prior years where there were damage to the spillway. Can you address those concerns? Were, were there testing? Any, uh, I guess, improvements made at that time to maybe prevent a situation like this from happening? Well, we have constant uh, ongoing maintenance and inspection activities uh, in the department and by FERC, so I'm just not sure what the circumstances were of the past. Gary, obviously, Yeah. So through this flood operations center, we coordinate with reservoir managers and local maintaining agencies. Uh, as a general practice, we essentially use our reservoirs to meter water out and let the uncontrolled flows go through. That'll be the kind of current practice, and we'd see that practice in the future. Obviously, bringing the reservoir down is a real critical factor right now, so we can basically continue this normal operations of the system.